The following podcast may contain spoilers. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. We've tried to record this once before, and we started having mechanical issues, and we were like, no. No, this this book is too good. Yeah, we did record this one. We're going to do this one freaking right. Yeah, man. Of course. Hey, everybody. <laughs> this is uh, Treading the Path of the Heavens. I'm your host, Jonathan Kenny, joined with my uh, two co-hosts. This is Richard. And this is Bill. And I have designated myself the perennial guest, so I will not take offense that I am not a co-host. Yeah, no, that was that was. When you my start intention. reading I mean, the books, you'll be a host. I mean, we we don't really have fences, so don't take too many. But I think honestly, when you if you do ever uh, review a book, I'm just gonna have you be a guest host for that episode, and then from like the next episode, you'll continue to be perennial guest. No, I will be host, and you will all be guests. No, he will perennial be semi perennial and guest host Seth Thompson for this episode. <laughs> uh, oh my god! Hi, I'm Seth. Also, but this week we are talking about. The incredible Shinsha novel by Argan. Argan? Uh, I Shall Seal the Heavens. I Shall mm. Seal the Heavens. Fun fact, guys. I started reading this. So I know this novel. Wait, you started reading this between the last time we tried to record this and now? No, because last time we recorded, I had already begun reading it. That's further. true. You know what? I don't remember much of the last time we recorded, which is going to make for a really nice recording right now. Yeah, I kind of wanted to let it sit long enough that it got out of our memory so we could go fresh. Yeah. Um, but I, I got to get into it because this book is incredible. Expansive. It goes places. Uh, I, I, I don't want to say it's my favorite uh, Shinja novel because like Coiling it. Dragon hits my heart in a special way. It presses my buttons. But I would say personally in my estimation, it is the best written Shinsha novel I've read. It is quite the page turner. You can definitely sit down and really devour some pages of this very surprisingly long. It's way longer than I realized it was. <laughs> it is a very <laughs> long series. The chapter total? I think we talked about this a couple um, times. There is a 16, uh, 1,614 chapters. That's a lot of chapters. Uh, yeah. The chapters it, are quite long. It is. And... um. I think this series is about 20% longer than Coiling Dragon, um, wow. which, as I, I think we mentioned in the Coiling Dragon episode, is slightly longer than uh, Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time if you're using average uh, character-to-word trans, uh, translations. Ridiculous. Yeah, no, that it, you feel it, too. It definitely, uh, it definitely takes time. Yeah, uh, and, and that's, that's important because this story, I think, much more than any of the other ones I've read, is about the Tao. For those of you who have not listened to other episodes, that's the path. Uh, the way it could mean a lot. Like, of it, it's like the, it's sword. hard to say. It doesn't like saying that it is the way. That is a translation of it, but the Tao is by its very nature ephemeral. It is, it is a type of thing that is. It is the invisible wind that we can only see by its effect on the trees. Like that. That I think is one of the most eloquent explanations for the Tao. I like that. Wuxia World um, has an entire page in their long page on their frequently asked questions part of their website that explains Dao. Just explains Dao, shows all of the Taiji uh, diagrams and all of the understandings of the, n- the numerical significance of the Dao. Yeah. So I recommend checking that out, guys, because uh, it'll help you with some of the basic understanding before you start to understand other people's doubts. Sounds like I should have done that while I was reading any of these books I was supposed to read. It helps you learn the way. Oh, don't worry. We're reinstating homework after this one. Yep. Uh, Be prepared. (laughs) Be prepared. But no, seriously, guys, I can't... I gotta get a little bit more passionate here, guys, because I can't describe to you how good this series is. Um... This is one of the funniest Shinja novels I've read. Um, like, Argan is incredible. Um, 
he does have some incredibly fine moments, and it's not just like a lump together. It is throughout. Like each book just is like four to five chapters of him training and then doing something hilarious. And it, it I, I can't even say like where at least where I'm at, it's not even like four to five chapters of him training. It's him finding a way to get ahead over other people monetarily and then taking that monetary value and then flash training himself up in like a time skip. All right. Of him in a cave somewhere. Spending or... money to gain <laughs> cultivation resources because his <laughs> broken item is really very, very broken. Who is he giving money to in a cave? Uh, okay. <laughs> Before we get to that, because this is really important, let me explain the novel trans uh the novel updates summary of I Shall Sell the Heavens. Okay? The description is what I want, the heavens shall not lack. What I don't want had better not exist in the heavens. This is a story which originates between the eighth and ninth mountains, the world in which the strong prey upon the weak. My name is Mung Hao. The ninth generation demon sealer. I shall seal the heavens. I mean, all of the, like, these are, I assume all of these are like basically essential. These are essentially the back of the box translations or the back of the novel translations. Yeah, of, like, like this is what, the dust flap. exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that is an excellent one. That, that first sentence in that uh, description is a description of Meng Hao's character. Um, he is shameless. He is overbearing. Um, if there's something he wants, it better exists. And if there's something that he doesn't, it better not. He makes sure of it. Meng Hao, his Tao is the Tao of freedom. Or maybe greed. <laughs> the, the freedom to freedom. have everything. Yeah, he's... I would, I would say mercantilism, but <laughs> I, I guess... No. Uh, let's oh my God, he's free. the truest capitalist. <laughs> let's, let's talk about... Our main character here, Meng Hao. Um, <sighs> Meng Hao is the most shameless character I have read in a Shinshin novel. That's saying a lot, I think, because you describe a lot of these characters as shameless. I think it's a pretty key trope uh, in, in, in the genre. I mean, if 90% of the population of the book just continue to call him that, pretty sure, like, he takes the cake in that realm. Yeah, we, we say that because it comes up in the translation all the time. Because he and his damn bashful smile have conned so many people out of way more money than it should have. I mean, he's in his own words, he's doing God's work. I mean, he's saving lives. He's, he's living a true, honest lifestyle, making money, via peddling his wares. He's, he's great. Oh, yeah, no, he's only here to help. Of course. Himself. Like a true scholar. <laughs> yeah, and, and that is, in fact, uh, among Hao's origins, is he was a scholar living in the mortal world, uh, trying to gain a position on an imperial court uh, and having failed on his third attempt, um, having gone into debt to do so. Yeah. He's so, like... And that debt follows him. He is, he never wishes to go into debt with anyone else from then on. Yeah, he's, it's, it's funny because like, it, the amount of money that is, the amount of debt that he has that establishes his horrifying, ter like terrifying need to acquire money is, is born out of this need of like, of no money. He didn't have any money. He had, he owed 12 silver which in the scope of wealth in this story is immediately nothing. Yeah. Yes. It's like pennies, like a half of a penny. But he doesn't want to owe that at all. But he learned his lesson as a mortal that he never wants to owe money. Right. Or even better, he wants everyone to owe him money. That but is the preferable state. Yeah. He was so upset about owing money and needing to pay back money when he gets kidnapped at the beginning of the story to start this story. He's kind of looking at the monetary value of being kidnapped by an immortal. Uh, yeah, he's I like, learn. Yeah, that's worth like this amount of gold. <laughs> hey, and I won't have to pay the guy back. I'll probably never see him again. 
Talk about a bright side. Yeah. So no, yeah, seriously, this story starts with our main character getting kidnapped by an immortal, mostly because he was standing in the wrong place and said, immortals don't exist. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, that scene is so good. Dude. Womp womp. Because like he sees a bunch of dudes. Okay. He, oh, this is the way this stuff frame. I'm going I'm to frame this beginning of this story. This is the, sure. this is call me Ishmael. This is, this is the beginning. All right. Yeah. He is standing on a mountain. Overlooking this sick river down there on the side of this cliff. He throws a bottle into it that has like a wish or like, well, some stuff in it about him. Hoping someone sees it. He mentions that if I fall over here, there's like a 20% chance of me living. And then he sees some dudes in a crevasse hanging for their lives. He walks to him. He recognizes some people from his village or whatever. A couple of them, a couple of dudes he does not recognize. And he's like, hey, man, I'm going to help you. They need help. They're like, we've been thrown here by an immortal. And he makes a joke like, immortals aren't real. And then he goes down there and then. Down comes a bitch on a flying sword being like, oh, I'm not bitch. real. A flying sword bitch? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yes. Yeah, just, just levitating sword she flies in on, standing oh, oh, oh. on the sword, being like, what? Say I'm sorry, oh, what? Oh. Welcome. You're now the next person to get chosen because you have some potential. Come on down. And puts him in like a giant bag. And down he comes. Yeah. Um, they also focus on like this this flying sword lady is also extremely attractive at the same time. Oh, oh. fairy like beauty. Yeah, no, she's she's great. Uh Ju King. Um <laughs> Can we can we can we have a, a running counter on our website whenever that exists that is characters described as having beauty that is fairy like? No, because I can think of like twenty examples off the top of my head no, and that's like that's not fine. delving. I don't know. There's too many. We just I don't want to I mean, do it. I mean, I would like also I would on the flip side be like, we could count how many ugly characters there exist. <laughs> and there's just like as three. many. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well no, well, I, I guess we're counting no, there's the yeah, villains. Yeah, sure. they get killed. And bodies. <laughs> but I don't know. They like to make villains real pretty too. <laughs> they just like pretty folks in their books. It's true. Yeah, that's well, what happens when you become more pure. I think it's because all the characters that are relevant in their stories all work out all the time. They work out. Remove p- impurities, work out. Got the best face cream in existence. It's called cultivation. It's incredible. Yeah, it's the key of yeah, the world. It just pours out all those toxic sludge from your pores. So like, no, so he gets kidnapped. He gets end up as like a cabin boy for the fucking Reliance sect. Chopping, literally like chopping wood. Oh yeah. Monghouse sucks on such a great level. Physically, because he's always been poor, he hasn't eaten much, doesn't have much muscle, so there's no way he can chop down enough trees. Are they like magic trees? Is it no, like no, magic they're wood? normal trees. They're, these are big trees, and you don't get to eat unless you cut down ten a day. Mm. He can barely cut down one. You gotta do the whole thing where he chips around in a circle and then does it again, and then like pushes it real hard. Or well, they also gave him a book that was like, if you do this thing, you can learn how to cultivate. You can get to level one. Good job. In the Reliance sect. And then you can join the actual sect if you can do this thing. And so he's like, fuck, I'm oh, becoming immortal. Is this like uh, is this like outside member, inside member? Like we've had in other books? No, these aren't even out. These are servants. He's a servant right now. I see. He he's can like, earn the right to be an outer sect member. <laughs> he, uh, he's an outer, <laughs> outer sect member. He is it's a like servant for Broadway. the outer sect. I see. I see. <laughs> okay. I just... I'm trying to relate it to other things that I don't even think that's in a book we have talked about. I think that might be from that that uh that what was that thousand thousand rose petals fucking the, the, yeah the, actually the the, 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 yeah. I, I mean the outer second <laughs> intersect disciples there are a thing and everything we've covered no I absolutely yeah. but like we haven't really talked about the outer sect uh, okay, intersect aspects okay. of anything you never want to be out okay being outer sect is better than being like a normal person right, right. yes outer cool. sect is like. Hey, you know, eventually uh, people are going to come with us with a lot of cannon fodder, and we're going to need people to block the cannon fodder. Oh, uh, outer sect equals mooks. <laughs> yeah, intersect equals Don't like... It's, it's, a, it's a place to find people with potential, but it, much like in Shokugeki no Soma, 99% of outer sect disciples are stepping stones for the 1% like, that rise to the inner sect. They right. were... You see, being an outer sect guy isn't that bad, because... You get some say, people don't want to kill you unless your sect has problems with other people. Like, it's it's not bad being outer sect, but you'll forever be. It's like, Bottom like of the being, totem pole. It, it's like being just like a normal 
signee versus being an officer, you kind of want to be an officer. You always want to be an officer. Yeah, you. Well, you, I mean, you want to come in as uh, as as an enlisted. You don't want to be enlisted in this world. One strong person is more important than a hundred people that aren't as strong as that person. I mean, that's because yeah, that's power described everything. Well, yeah, but power levels are 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 such in this world that a person with a slight gap in power can basically kill the other person almost every time, like instantaneously, without any say whatsoever. At the beginning of this story, almost every person in this world of the immortals could breathe funny at Meng Hao, and he would dissolve. I see. Yeah. Not even breathe at him. He can just look at him, actually. <laughs> Meng Hao just yeah. a, a pile of paper mache? No, no. Humans are a pile of paper mache. I see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> and we're stepping into a world where that's not, that's not enough anymore. He's just a relatively weak human, so it's even more visceral and seeing his growth to the top. But Not- essentially, he gets tired of, tired of having to steal his food to survive, so he decides he's going to learn this cultivation to hurry up and get into the outer sect. Which, he genuinely succeeds. Um, so, hooray, you know, promotion. He's yeah. now an outer sect member. Woo. I would like to put in one thing. He, he learns a very important lesson from his little sect book which is that it's always important to have someone to rely upon, which he correctly learned at the lesson to be, have someone bigger than you that can beat up the people around you. Oh, uh, not have someone to blame, because have someone to blame is a really good one, too. Well, he, do- he doesn't have people to blame so much as he frames people. Ah, I see. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's patriarch reliance. That's the way he would live. You gotta either A, be powerful enough to rely on yourself, but when you can't rely on yourself, you got to rely on other people that are that stronger guy, than you. Did that guy change his name, or was he just born to be the patriarch See, to this really patriarch fucking... reliance? That that's just his Taoist name, right? Yeah, he's, oh, I see. but he his was Taoist so name is Ryan. bad I forget we have ass. Names. Yeah. He forced the the sect was forced to change their name because they weren't originally the Reliance sect. They were forced to change their name to being the Reliance sect, named after patriarch reliance. I, a notoriously greedy patriarch. Oh, yeah, that dude's a piece of garbage. I gotta read great. more of these books. There are conventions of these books that I just completely forget sometimes. Like, like down names? How'd I forget down names? Well, uh, I mean, people they have, like, nicknames that they get from a thing. Like, that's... We, we've described everybody with, like, nicknamies like that, except for maybe in Coiling Dragon, it seemed like everybody just had a name. No, yeah, no, no, even no, no. Coiling no. Dragon... He, well, well. It was whenever they became, uh, like... They stopped being warriors and wizards and like went the next step. They gotcha. get a name. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. they they become like saints and stuff. But yeah, still, uh, I just just a thought, uh, just a floaty thought. Is um, that... It was no. really prevalent in um, Desolate Era. Desolate Era. It gotcha. was, did not when like you would even run into these people have the same Taoist names. Holy crap! Yeah. You guys should be cool with each other. And they're not. There can Why be only there one. Was, there was basically just like a certain point in your immortal cultivation path that it'd be like, all right, at this point, you pick your down name. And if it's somebody else's, you got to go fuck them up. No. Nah. Highlander there's, rules. You can't do There's so many people that exist that that's impossible. I'll be honest. Like, yeah, the first off, what Richard just said. But second off, if you met someone with the same down name as you, you would probably get along with that person super well. Or you can behead them and take their power. We've discussed well, this. Yeah, but Islander if, rules. If you're fucking immortal praying mantis, then yeah, sure. But oh like, <laughs> really want to watch Highlander? Yeah, yeah, do praying mantises absorb other praying mantises' souls? Yeah, I hope they so. decapitate. I mean, don't mates? you see those little if like lightning give... storms? <laughs> like, okay, this is off. But now all I can think about is. Following a praying mantis, develop a cultivation base, and then rise into being god of the mantises. That sounds incredible, like, well, no, and I, I want it. Would be god of the mantises, <laughs> human-sized people. Yeah. yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It would be god of the mantises, and then it would be good enough to be able to fight regular dudes until it becomes god of the dudes. It's a, <laughs> such a good mantis. It's the god of the dudes. No, guys, I'll do that in my story. Where I keep writing things from the perspective of the the stepping stones of it, the real I hero. I really like the idea. <laughs> oh, that's a great one because you finally you're like, oh wait, somebody's cultivating. Is this a mantis? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Meng Hao, he finally. I don't want to skip uh, skip the friends he makes. The one friend he makes was he one the, of the hangy the, boys. 
is one of the hangy boys, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the hangy boy that's not from. Why am I calling hangy boy? Oh. Because I just called him that, and boy is oh, a real it's good in your mind. <laughs> It's so a good word. It, a he calls guy. him fatty yeah. for a long time. Okay? Good old Lee Fugu. No, I, he always calls yeah, him fatty. You're right. He is forever fatty. Fatty is really cool in that fatty won't stop crying because he comes from a really rich parents. He has cool. Like a, oh, no, actually no, no, no. in China, uh, fatty doesn't really have like a negative connotation. No, like it's the not crying I, part. No, 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 it's no, not no. that. Cool I just guy. actually wanted to make that as a, as a generalization. Like fatty is not like a disrespectful nickname in, in, in at least in the writing of this, it may be in modern day China. I'm not. I mean, I've been on Chinese uh, boards of people talking, making fun of like people they really like, and then the nicknames they come up with are really insulting, but it's, they're considered good names. It's weird. but no, like I, I've I've uh, Dolu Dalu, for instance, has a character that's nicknamed Fatty, and it's like it's it's not to say that it can't be used insultingly, but it, Fatty is also an affectionate nickname. In a certain, yeah, okay. in a certain. Oh, it's respect. like playing football, and you're you're a big guy, and you're you're starting. They call you Bubba or big, big or tiny, name, I, okay, yeah, or tiny. Bubba's. It can Just, have that connotation. Essentially, listen, listen. If you're a Bubba out there, and you're listening to this podcast, I feel very bad for the thing I'm about to say, but fuck every Bubba that has ever existed. I have never met a nice Bubba in my life. I'm sorry. We're continuing. That's uh, that's how my so little bad. sister addresses me. Well, fuck you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably from brother. Well, yeah, no, that's fine. But but Fatty is really cool, and that ignoring the crying he did because his life was actually pretty dope. This is a step down for him, like yeah. super hard. He was, well, was rich. He's, trying. he's okay. super rich. He's like, he has a super hot her. wife, like uh, a fiance, super hot. Didn't he have multiple hot wives? No, no, he was dead. He was gonna, supposed to marry a super hot wife. A hot wife so hot that people want to take her from him to bed. Sure. Yeah. Viciously, but then he got kidnapped into this immortal world. So he was right, like he was gonna control a bunch of sh- shit, and then he took it from now. him. So now he's sad, yeah. but it's cool because Fatty sleep sleeping Fatty is unstoppable at this level. He's a monster. Yeah, he like unknowingly cultivates like eating cult creates eating cultivation where he just starts like cultivating his the hardness and sharpness of his teeth. Incredible. He didn't know he was doing it because he was trying to learn the stuff to get to the outer sect, but he wasn't getting it even though Meng Hao was doing it. Come to find out some other stuff's going on. But in the first night, he's crying. He cries himself to sleep. Some big dude shows up, bristling with muscles. Like, he looks super impressive, but he... He's he's in Mooksville, so sure. clearly he's not impressive. Yeah. And he's like, guys, well, you're new here, so you're going to cut my trees for me. Yeah, you're going to cut my trees. And tent. then you'll cut your trees after. And that's what's going to be or I'm going to destroy you. And because Fatty was like destroy, like gnawing on the wood, destroying tables and stuff while sleeping, talking about, that's my, was it, my, that's my chicken or something? What, what oh, no. It? He's eternally teething, like yes. anything in sight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just giant oral fixation. So he's like, the, the big guy has like this. This is ex- explains how Meng Hao functions. The big guy took your 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 fiance and your food. So sleepwalking fatty begins to attack him in his sleep. <laughs> Bites his so hard. Bites so hard, the dude can't get him off, and he's like getting destroyed. And he's punching fatty, but fatty won't wake up. He's just gnawing on this dude. I will bite you to death. Fatty said. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, It'll cure you. And then that guy then becomes their bitch for the rest of that time period. You know, there. I said I didn't remember a lot of things from the last time we tried to do this, but I don't remember this guy at all. This guy yeah, sounds no, fucking I tried right. to keep bringing him up, but we kept moving on. Mm. Fatty is one of my favorites. Ugh. I just have to explain Fatty. Fatty, not only is Fatty a great guy, because you can depend on Fatty. Well, Mung Hao can depend on Fatty. Fatty can cut down trees. Yeah, no, Fatty is the first <laughs> of of many, many characters in this series that Meng Hao becomes close with, that that become an important person to the story because they are important to Meng Hao. And, like, we, we don't lose touch with them. There's always a where are they now slash what's going on with this guy? Or if there's an arc that's just running into them, they'll show up and just pal around it may be three or four books before we see it it may be that they get an aside paragraph in the middle of a chapter where it's just talking about like he looked up into the cloud sensing something but like they're a character that observes 
and comments and creates a foil for Meng Hao. And like, as you see Meng Hao grow, you see their view of Meng Hao grow. Fatty was like also one of the first to believe, truly believe in Meng Hao. Because though Meng Hao at first needs to rely on Fatty so he can live. Because without Fatty, Meng Hao can't eat. Right? Sure. Yeah. Right. But, but later, because of this focus in the beginning on reliance, Fatty can then rely on Meng Hao. Well, even at the beginning, he relied on Meng Hao because Meng Hao knew how to cook. And, oh, yeah. And yeah, Fatty right, was yeah. just like, Oh man, you could cook chickens. You're, you're my brother. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much yeah, how this starts. Much, yeah. yeah, but l- later it becomes bigger reliance on Meng Hao. But it, it, it's an interesting relationship of people using people to later use themselves be used, and I think that's really interesting. All right. Yeah, Meng Hao has he's he's the kind of person that Shinzo novels describe as. Um, like repaying kindness by 10 times and repaying enmity by 10 times. Like no matter how you treat Meng Hao, he's going to treat you in the same way. If you're the person that truly shows him kindness in a way that is meaningful, in a way that causes you to have to sacrifice something or, or actually put up something of worth, he's going to remember that and repay that, or at least do his damnness too. A lot of the book is him being in incredible situations and because he's in those situations, um, getting obligations with the people or the entities that rule over or exist in those places. And then they will help him or give him a legacy or put him, push him along in his path. And then it may be three or four books later that he goes and actually fulfills that obligation. Or in some cases, the entire series. That sounds... I. I... I, I like that, like, concept echoing through the story like that. Like, you, you start by, like, the, the it sounds like the relationship with Fatty immediately goes, okay, look, here's two guys, and, like, this one's going to help this one, and here's that paradigm. Okay, now let's play with that paradigm. And, like, how are we going to, like, this guy's going to help this guy, and then you're not going to see it for a way fucking long time, but then this guy's going to help this guy. But you know it's still coming because we set that paradigm up for you. And so, like, I, I, I like that concept a, a lot. As far as I know, he, like, the, the author loves to, like, leave strings, and he just ties a bunch of strings, that, like, to the beginning, and he ties strings to those strings until it all wove back. Yeah. In on itself. I mean, this is a book about karma. A, a lot of it is about karma to the point where, at a certain point, he actually, Meng Hao, the main character, actually begins to travel the path of karma where he can affect the karma between things. At a certain point, he creates an ability to make people karmically owe him money. Incredible. It is incredible. That's, that's like what's. Uh, it's, it's grander than you think it is. He just actually. decides, oh. You owe me money, by the way. What's that? What's that? Uh, JoJo Stan, the the guilt one. Does it work? Kind of. Does it work guilt based? Oh, like the lock. Yeah. Uh, it's not guilt based. No? no. 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 It's not. It's 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 just like creating like one sided karma. It's some bullshit. Much like many things. You that owe me has. stuff because I deem it so. Oh, I see. It's it's not even <laughs> it's not even like guilt. It's just this is how it is. Yeah. It's that, it's that expression of it's that expression that we were talking about at the very beginning of if there's something I want, the heavens better have it. I and see. if I don't want it, it better, better not exist. Fucking not exist. <laughs> this guy sounds like he gets his way. But, one but, way or the but other. guess what? That sounds super serious and imposing. But really, this is more of a comedy than I care to. Then, then we really touched on like, well, he gets his main character item, and he's given to him by force out of some big practical joke by this asshole. Term to find out, it's actually awesome, but it has this interesting side effect in the beginning, where when you point it at things that have fur or feathers, it makes their asses explode. Just it's yeah, like like <laughs> dead, right like out. not not like hilariously, like oh we're shitting or something. Like no, like bloody explosion. The animals die. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, I mean, and we have no idea why this is happening. It just happens around animals with fur and feathers, and which like, leads to a few hilarious <laughs> plot points. There's one where a guy's like creating a, a challenge mountain where the the sectocyte like another. Their their two sects have like enmity, 
or not enmity, but like a playful rivalry. Sure. Yeah, these two super swole dudes that are leaders of things are like, I made this mountain and put all of my treasures on it. And the other guy was like, my dudes are my treasures and I've trained them and they will conquer this. He's like, if they could find the shit on the mountain, they could they keep, could keep it. it. He, but all my deadly, super crazy experimental beasts are on there. He spent years getting these crazy, like, monstrous beasts that could murder people. I bet, like, most of them have fur and feathers, though. Oh, oh, someone, yeah. someone chases Meng Hao onto this mountain, and he proceeds to murder a path up this mountain to where all the treasure is. Incredible. People are, like, shocked, like, how is he doing this? He's weaker than us by, like, multiple levels. He's just Doesn't striding make... through What is that spear? It. It's not a spear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Faking it. He, he made three spears before he walked in, a copper, a silver, and a gold one. He's just holding on to it and just holding a spear out as things explode. He's, he's pointing at the things and their butt explodes. He just points, points it and underneath the sleeve is an actual protagonist item. And protagonist item has a hard on for feathers. Oh, yeah. Like, he can't control it. It, it will wants... fly out and just murder things. It just <laughs> Richard, I don't know how far you are in the story, but that is an incredibly apt description. <laughs> That's a super hard on. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, it It wants it. <laughs> and like It got uh, that hunger. And, and it, it is brutal because, like, the whole time these this horrible stuff is happening, the two dudes are sitting up there and they're commenting on things and making fun of it, and the other one's making fun of him. It's, oh, you thought your dudes were nice. This is happening. And he was roasting him the whole time while all of his outer disciples are getting bodied. And yeah. he's losing face. And then suddenly, Meng Hao shows up, and he's, shit, he's shitting on all of the monsters. Every so the guy's guy. roasting him. He's like, oh, remember that? The, that dude was like, oh, he runs forever? Yeah, he ran from forever the other way. The shame that he lost his leg from the explosion. You know, like, and the guy's like, I'm going to go kill him. He's like, no, you can't. You stopped me, so I'm stopping you. We're going to finish this go game. Yeah. But, yeah. but here, to touch on Monk House shamelessness, after this whole mountain adventure happens and he's taken most of the best treasures from the mountain. Oh, yeah. Um, he the left pe- treasures? That doesn't sound like Monk Well, House. I only say that because the other disciples were there and collecting treasures in the absence of the guardian monsters that he had killed. And you were correct, though. It doesn't sound like Meng Hao. He collected most of them. Okay. Good old legacy. Uh, there's a part where he literally takes the tile of the place that he's at. He's like, what? <laughs> Did, God damn it. He was, that was a he very was, embarrassing <laughs> laugh, but I am, that got me. He was upset. The place had just like, this is it? This is all you're going to give me? I'm going to take you tiles, too. Yeah, no, no. It wasn't. Not ever everything not nailed down. It was everything not nailed down and the shit that was nailed down. Yeah, because tiles are pretty well <laughs> cemented in. That's kind of their deal. <sighs> Guess not. No. Uh, if it has value, it is it. But yeah. yeah, so he stands there. He's got these magical spears. So he gets off the mountain and the disciples from these two sects are running over to him because they're just, the sect masters are like, get that fucking spear. Whatever you do, like you will get great rewards if you could bring that spear you'll back. Be, you'll get to be an inner disciple if you get me that spear. And so these people are tripping over themselves. Like, they literally surround Meng Hao and won't let him move and are, like, threatening him with money. And he doesn't want to sell. He's like, guys, this... this he literally says, this is worthless. This is just an iron spear. And the, the guy... The, the spear, though. There's a dude who's actually high level looking at this, and he's like, there's there's nothing magic with that spear. <laughs> but he doesn't say anything. He's like, oh, it's pretty funny. So, like, these top... Like, the top-level outer sect disciples of these sects are literally giving their entire life savings, borrowing money from the higher people around them, trying to outbid each other. He gave, they gave, like, imagine you, you're, you're a cultivator. You found a legacy. This is, I risked my life. I got this. I can base my entire thing off this. Sure. And he's like, I'm going to trade this and then get these dudes legacies and I'll pay them back and give them the Mung Hao for this worthless ass spear. He's like, this is an iron spear. Are you sure? Like, Are you certain? This is pretty garbage. And they're like, nah, man, we want that. Take this medicine. This medicine, you can only find it when blank, when the moon does this and the blah, 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 does that. Oh, God. It was an awesome scene. That spear later ends up inserted into a cliff as an eternal reminder about how bad they got conned. Oh <laughs> was there a little plaque that's like, don't trust Mung Hao? No, you don't, they don't even need it. Everyone knows the story. Uh, I Every single one of those dudes that conned themselves. Mung Hao didn't even con them. They con themselves. True. They 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 they, they threw themselves swore on that oaths spear. like I'm gonna get strong and I'm gonna <laughs> fucking kill my <Mung> cow. <laughs> he creates so much enmity uh, just by sheerly being around. But people. no, like in that in the, during sometime during that scene, the words a bashful smile crept onto his face happened. <laughs> 
Like, you haven't read that recently, but you know for goddamn sure it's in there? I know for sure it's in there, because yeah. that, that bachelor smile is one of the scariest things you can see. Like, if that smile appears, you know someone is about to, like, have the shirt taken off of his back. Or die? No, no. it's usually not. Di- no, it's almost never die when that smile shows up. All right. Yeah, no, people walk away with their life and little else. Yeah. People walk away wishing they had lost their lives. Oh, yeah. It, because <laughs> this man is easier. a con man. Because this man, he's not a con man. Because this man is a fine he's, scholar. He is absolutely and, a con man. And a, a fine man of the people and a good merchant. He'll pretend because he doesn't look like a, a cultivator should look. He looks swarthy and weak when he's actually ridiculous. So, like, in the beginning, it, when he was an outer disciple, he's like, I mean, we. Being this poor, I can't get enough cultivation materials to do stuff. So I'm going to sell medicine, like medicinal herbs and pills to heal things and whatever, right? Sure. Well, I think, no, he hadn't He hadn't figured out the mirror by that point. If I'm trying to imagine someone swarthy. Yeah, he had. Yeah, so we let's talk about this mirror because we've been alluding to it. Mm. This copper mirror that gets forced onto him. Mm. It's literally a mirror that if you put an item on it and money on it, they both get absorbed, and once you have put enough money on the item, the item pops back out with an exact copy of it. Well, you get the... No, okay. He can and, copy things that there should only be one in, one in the world of. And now, to, to, to describe this, a copper mirror is just like a circular copper dish. Yeah. As far as yeah. I'm oh, aware. Oh, it's rust. It looks like rusted. It looks like a piece of shit, but it's actually amazing. And he discovers it on mistake. Like, some crazy shit went down, and he discovers... He says some stuff near it, and then it disappeared, and you look back, and it's like, there's, a, there's, a, there's another one here? What's going on? But he decides to exploit this because I can get all of these interesting medicines that can make me strong and copy it if I can get money. But, and because he needs money, he's like, what's the best way of making money? I could do what everyone else does and kill everyone, but I'm a scholar. I don't want to kill. It's not copy right shit. to kill. It's not right. It goes against everything I believe in. I'm a cell medicine. So he goes and gets all of all all of the all of the pills, all of the medicine, all of the medicine that no one wants to buy. Sure. Not even a little bit. They'll Copies buy like they'll it. buy one or two just in case. Yeah, just but in like, case. that's all they need. But he, he 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 basically finds a way to reliance himself into getting that guy that works there at the what is it, the pill outlet or yeah, whatever? The, the yeah, medicinal pill outlet. And he he was like, You're only gonna sell this to me at a discount later. And he goes to where they kill each other, where they can just kill each other. Yeah, the the sect has like uh, the zones for people in the lowest level of cultivation, the key condensation area. Um, and and in the first one, in the first three levels of key condensation, of which there are nine total. Um, so there's like a like a coliseum, like it's, oh, no. it's, it's like it's like, like a, it's like a training it's forest like, or it's area like on a plateau. Thing. Where if you go past this line and you're between the ranks of one to three, you can kill each other. If you're four. You can't do that to people. Yeah, but is there's like, like, is it like magic or there's no, like, no, no, no. There's, there's like rules system? or the, the the sect will kill you. Got it. Yeah, Honestly. the higher ups will just punish you if you do it. But and there are actually really strong people in the sect. Yeah, but yeah, he he goes into this area for this one to three area and basically using the the money and stuff that he earns from the pills. He 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 and his own hard effort. He er- works his way up to the third level condensation. But before the- he moves to the fourth. He got to the very top of the third level. Like 3.9999. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, I'm going to make money here. So he makes a sign that says um, the the medicinal pill outlet, whatever. Medicinal pill outlet outlet? Yeah. 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 And, I think the first one was, was the medicinal, medicinal pill, pill pavilion. P- uh, pavilion. Yeah. And then he created like the pill pavilion outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And he's there and he's like. The pillvillion. What are they he, doing he, over <laughs> there in China with puns? Pavilion. It, it, I heard. It might have been there. It, it, it could have been lost in translation. That's uh, But Which the I people are killing each awesome. other. He sees these two dudes about to kill each other. Right. They're fighting and one is about to lose. And he's like fellow Taoist or whatever. If you buy my whatever bone pill or my bleed my bleeding pill, you'll get stronger and you can be him and take all of his stuff. And you can the buy chunk. mine for one to one. One spirit pill for one of these. He's like, the dude's like, this is bullshit. I can buy eight of those for one spirit pill. And he's like, Yeah, but if you had this right <laughs> now, you'll win the fight, and then you can take all his money and you'll be positive. Yeah, that's enough to buy the thing that I was talking about, plus some. So, like, yeah, so it's a bad deal right now, but in the long term. You'll get to live. You could just die. Yeah. 
So the guy would you t- rather lose? So the guy turns him down, but but then he starts losing, like really losing. So he's like, all right, all right, fine. So he buys it. Grits his teeth. He, he takes it, and he starts winning. So Meng Hao, ever the businessman, starts selling to the other guy. Yeah, he just walks over to the other guy. And he's like, dude, that guy just bought my medicine, and now he's kicking your ass. But if you had this pill, which I'm still selling for just one spirit stone, yeah. then you could turn it around because now his pill effect, his pills already started to wear off. And, but he's just already has an advantage. So like, and, and the guy's like, fine, sure, whatever. I'll buy your pill. So then you're like, he buys the pill. And the other guy's like, hey, what the hell? And he's like, I'm, a, I'm open for a lot, want, man. Yeah, like, man. I, I'm just trying to save lives here. I'm worried that you guys are going to go too Keep far. in mind, he's making himself look really shitty and weak. He's yes. bowing down. He's constantly he's humbling himself. <laughs> humbling, looking weak. And he keeps doing this and people are starting to get up. Like he does this to everyone. And he, people start to get fed up. And one of the guys who thinks he's a real big tough guy, they explain to him like as, as a man's man, the toughest looking guy, badass, all this other shit, this, that, and the other. He shows up. He's like, I'm going to take all your stuff. Blah, and he punches at him. And then Mung Hao the smile and the cow town goes away and he mercilessly beats the shit out this dude like how could you fight me him. i'm just a low i'm just a lowly merchant i just want to help people and you would attack me how dare you this goes against all moral principles this is terrible as he's just like beating the fuck out of this he's guy he's literally stuck jumping up and down on his body while saying this Wait. and then the dude was like fine fine i'll buy it i'll buy it i'll buy it he gets, he's, he's like, like oh you're gonna buy all my pills at 10 spirit stones a pop <laughs> you're so generous and he's like whoa, whoa, whoa i thought it was one and he's like oh no no we went up <laughs> we went up in price yeah. and he, he picks him up he's he goes back to being a nice merchant, dusting the, the shoe prints off his body <laughs> real sorry about that <laughs> no 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 not really sorry about that like I can't believe someone would do this to you. How are you? Honest we should customer. find this man. <laughs> Shameless. Shameless. Uh, that is a great way to describe this character, it sounds like. And it, that becomes an interesting plot point later, which is what another thing I love about this, because everything has meaning in this. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is a story that has as much depth to me. Like another, The only story that I can think of that has as much depth and forethought in it is like One Piece. Mm. Like... A story that, like, the more you see it, the more evident it becomes that the entire story was thought out before one word of it was written. Like, mm. as you read more of I Shall Seal the Heavens, you keep, you keep having this moment where you're like, oh. And it was great reading this story as it was coming out being translated. Because uh, Deathblade, an incredible translator, by the way, he, he started doing this, I think, to learn how to translate Chinese or like uh, to, to improve his, uh, his Chinese, but he's married to uh, a native born Chinese. Uh, and she was able to always like help him if he got stuck. So he was just a workhorse. He would put out like 14 or 16 chapters in a week. Oh, that reminds me that he, he's working on what a will eternal, which also takes place in the same universe. Yeah, you know, it's like the cross universe this, stories. As I shall sell the heavens, which blows my mind because I shall sell the heavens part of a bigger universe, which is crazy to me because it's so so involved so far. Yeah, so it's, it's incredibly expansive. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, Re- uh, Renegade Immortal, I'm pretty sure, is another uh, novel that's in the same universe. And um, wait a second, when they talked about between the eighth and the ninth mountains, did these happen on other mountains? Between other mountains? Um, no, um, no. The mountain and seas are pretty much. They, like the mountains and seas might be referenced another thing, but it's it's a thing that's pretty focal for I shall seal the heavens. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. the the mountains and seas have a oof, like most other things in this story, just a far deeper and far reaching meaning. I see. What they did to get me, and dear listener, please listen to them because I'm gonna get them to tell tell you this story because <laughs> you can tell you a lot of one off stuff about this book, and we've only really covered stuff in the first book. In the very beginning. Yeah, like the first half of the first book. But they told me stuff that blew my freaking mind and made me go, I got to read this. It was something about him spending some time as an ocean. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just you could casually drop. Oh, yeah. And there was that century that he spent as an ocean. He was an ocean longer than he was anything else prior to being an ocean. Yeah, he spent he spent 
the majority of his life as an ocean for a little while. Is becoming an ocean a, a thing that happens to one willingly? Or... <laughs> oh, yeah, he chose to become an ocean. Okay. I thought it was like a euphemism. Is that like, like, no, no, no. like an ocean? He, he no, literally no. becomes an ocean. I, I thought an ocean. it was an accident that just sort of worked out. I thought it was like a witch's curse. Um, I don't know. No, no, it was, it was, it was his attempt to accomplish a thing. Ah, uh, I see. I remember now. Yeah. A witch kissed me and I turned into an ocean. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't just an ocean. It was a violent ocean of like of death, essentially. What the? Fuck? Yeah. A murder ocean? Yeah, you murder didn't say ocean. murder yeah, ocean. Like That's an, a different thing. It's like anti life water. <laughs> like, like, like the whole time they told me <laughs> about saw... a bunch of crazy stuff, right? Like about becoming an ocean or e boss promising to turn like a a, a lake into a, a river into a sea or something yeah and there's there's a time where he's like oh you're you want to you're you're a guy but you wanted to be uh a sea well i'll make you into a sea someday i promise now because you've helped me like they gave him some like advice and he's like shit that was super profound that really helped me along what, what can i do for you he's like well i've always wanted to be a sea and he's like i'm gonna make you a sea one day what were these things that people were were the were <laughs> Was that a ridiculous fucking statement that a man said to him? Like, hey, I always had a dream this about being actually... an ocean. <laughs> like, like I thought it was. I thought it was like a lake spirit. It might have been a. It, I think it, it was. It was like guiding trireme. All right. That that feels that feels way better. I just thought he like met some random peasant that was like, "Sup, dude? Here's some no, really, just some really cra- important some crazy things. man on the street begging for money. He's like, I want to be an ocean. I want to be a sea. I'm yeah, like, this and, dude. Yeah, this, yeah. You. He's just like <laughs> humoring a, a schizophrenic man who wants to be an ocean. No, yeah. but this is this is this is what this story is about. Like, you can read one book and you're in the next book, and they are almost two completely different stories, but they are so interconnected and they are so both important, and they are. <sighs> People he defeat sometimes, like if he doesn't kill them, will just show back up and have to fight him again, or become a friend because like the hundreds of years have passed, and instead of them being two people from different sex, they're both people from the same country that is now fighting a bigger, higher war that has kind of superseded all these past feelings and, oh, and tied like all that karma. Out. So it's like here, and then it's like whoop, yeah, okay. and that's that here, exactly and it's like, what the story that, is here, yeah. and then it's whoop. Yeah. That that story, I mean, they that is that, that is yet. inherently what cultivation stories are about. Because cultivation is, as you cultivate, you're rising higher and higher. And as you're rising higher and higher, your viewpoint becomes larger and larger. You start to see the secrets of the world that only the people with real influence actually get to learn. And then you become stronger again, and you learn that all the people that you thought were so mysterious and profound were just jobbers working for the person that's one level higher. And those are the people who have answers. But then you find out that, no, they don't even know what they're doing. They're being co- manipulated by a person that's one level higher. They think they're going after this one treasure or something that's going to change the destiny of their sect. They have no idea that they're falling under the machinations of one other. Per- and, and and it's this great thing. And Meng Hao is not a, always a reliable narrator. As there are I a lot of times where Meng Hao will figure out a thing and he's like, oh, okay. And then he'll just go and start resolving a situation. So there's a lot of situations where he'll walk into a, uh, an event and say something. And you're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Some shit's about to go down. And then and you don't know how it's going to resolve because there's information among how knows that you do not know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he withholds information from you, but not for too long. Like- well, yeah, it's never for a long period of time, but it, it's always it's. Because Aryan is an incredible writer, and, and, and like I, I, I don't know if we've talked about this enough. That is what the strength of this story is. It's not all these things we're saying are really cool, and I like the stories we're talking about. Like those are funny stories, and and they are not rare. Those, no. like I said, those were both within the first half of the first book. You were constantly laughing when you were reading the oh, story, yeah. but at the same time, in the next chapter, you can feel genuine sadness or profound hate. Or, or 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 anger or embarrassment, and you feel you can feel these different emotions all within the first book. Okay, like the uh, Ergen's writing is incredibly evocative. When the reason I said this book is about the Tao is not because it's a book that's literally trying to expound on Taoism or talk about Taoism. It's because when I read this book, my mind understands walking a path, taking a journey. The things like cultivation novels are an ex- an exposition on the Tao. Like they, they just are because what they're about is walking someone's Tao. 
like you reading this story, experiencing the things that they experience, it gives you an insight into the path that they walk their down. Now, and- he says this, and yes, this is all true, except there are times where it's really hard to translate because it's also esoteric because it's just ideas. So a lot of the fights end up becoming picture battles. Like, is my giant picture bigger than your giant picture? Uh, and then, like, I have a giant picture of a horse. Well, sucks to be you. I have a giant picture of the night sky with these constellations. See, where I met, the battles haven't got to that level of esoteric yet. I'm at the point where he fights people with money. Wait, I'm sorry. Money fighting sounds cool and all, but fighting someone with the concept of a horse versus the concept of the night sky or the concept of mountains. Yeah, I mean, but that's, like, that, that's Tao. Yeah. But no, that and, and what Bill is saying is true. There, There is a point where it kind of devolves into giant picture fighting. But <laughs> what Bill hasn't finished the story, that too is just one step upon this path that is Meng Hao's journey, Meng Hao's Tao. Yeah. Like, he goes through so many names. Like, at first he's a scholar. Then he's like a servant. Then he's an outer sect disciple. And then he's a merchant. Like then he's an ocean, then he's a demon, then, then he's, he's a, a Pokemon, Pokemon master. master. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh god, we can't get into the Pokemon master part t- tonight. I don't think this. No, is... no, no. He became a Pokemon master by out bragging all the Pokemon master clans, and then was just he showed up and he was like, "I am way better at posturing than you all." There's one person that he basically allows to become a disciple because he's impressed at how good he is at ass kissing. <laughs> Seems like a necessary part of your uh, your organization. <laughs> That's like, an interesting uh, path to walk. The art of brown nosing. <laughs> but no, I, I, there is... <laughs> that is my way. <laughs> there oh, is man. too much to say about I Shall Seal the Heavens because it is an expansive, epic novel that is incredibly written, incredibly consistent, and has an incredibly satisfying ending. Because um, like, this is completely finished, guys. Yeah. You yeah. can sit down and this read is, this. This is I'm, what, our second book or third book that is completely done? Yeah, that, that third is. One. Yeah, third, I think it's. We had Coiling Dragon. We Tate had and Yusha. And Tate and Yusha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, this is this is just. An, it's it's fairly recently that the translation finished the last like three or four months, I believe. Yeah. Um, But it's just an incredible book. It's It's one of. I want to use the word perfect to describe it. But no, nah, it transcends that. It takes perfect <laughs> and goes the step further. I just like the fact that if I'm having a bad day, I can sit down and I can read a couple chapters of this hilarious, hilarious novel <laughs> and feel a range of emotion. Most of it joy because I'm literally can sometimes be crying from laughing from some of the things going on. I'm, I'm yeah, so I, sorry. I have, Richard. There have been times where I've had to set down my tablet or whatever I'm reading on. To just like laugh for a while. Like, well, yeah, no, I can't. So I can't read. I have to wipe the tears away from my I've eyes. Been, I've been around for those moments, and it has spooked me a couple times because Kenny and I will just be sitting in a quiet room, and I'll be doing something on my phone, and Kenny will be quietly reading, and then he'll just go ha! and put his <laughs> like tablet down for a second, and I'll look over and be like, "What?" And he's like, "Just really here, let me tell you <laughs> twenty minutes of context so I can yeah. explain why this story is funny." Well, yeah, it's, he's never explained them, which he's like, "You just gotta read this book, man." Like. So no, but for serious, Richard, I am so sorry that you, that, well, no, keep finding all the stuff around you funny, but please make it to to where you find Lord Fifth. Yeah, please meet Lord Fifth and Lord Third. Oh, they're like <laughs> they're Lord's... the shining jewels of like. Sometimes they leave, and the story's just slightly less funny. Yeah, it's it's like how in Buffy, when Anthony Stewart Head isn't uh like actually an active member of the cast, and the the thing like becomes a gray dull yeah <laughs> yeah makes sense like yeah, as soon no, as it's... they show up they remind you what color is and then when they leave they take it with them believe in lord fifth gain eternal life All right. when lord fifth appears who dares call strike <laughs> i want to get this joke <laughs> <laughs> you also, do read more did did, did the translator uh, rhyme that or is that or is that you guys is uh well that's it's probably the translator rhyming it but but it's coming from the the Chinese. It was a similar joke in Chinese. Uh, the the this is another one of those books that we've talked about where the translator and the author were in communication. I love that concept in so much. Um, so he definitely got communication on on how to proceed and all that kind of stuff. Um, but more importantly, they talked about how to translate the book. 
Sure. And the the Deathblade and Ergen feel similarly in that translation should capture the emotion of the series rather than the literal word. And Deathblade did an incredible, incredible job of capturing those emotions. Like, emotion is what I Shall Seal the Heavens is about. That's the, that's the difference between, like, a good translation and a good translator versus a bad one or a machine translator. It's not about getting the right word for word translation. It's about proper interpretation and how to convey it. Right. This is why, like, well, because it's like this is prose. This prose is this is this is a yeah. translator's like. There's a, comes a point where you're translating an original work, and you put so much of your personal talent into your translated work that it it, it becomes kind of like criminal to have someone claim that work as someone else's, which is a problem that you see that happens sometimes in the novel translation well, like, area. I, I, when I was doing uh, research to put up the information for uh, this episode for Tate no Yusha, I guess? Yeah. Uh, I it, it seemed like there were two distinctly different translations for the first chunk of it, one that was like a, not necessarily a, a fan-only translation, but one that was like, a web translation and then one that was done officially as like the book, right? Am I, am I, am I misunderstanding the situation? There was a web novel translation yeah. for it that had gone like kind of like what we're reading, like a web, the translation of web novel. Then it got picked up to be a light novel and the guy rewrote it. So it got officially picked up. So the light novel is being released. So there's like a guy who put, or, or or a team of guys or or whatever that put hours and hours of work into the first couple chapters of that to, to no. translate it and that is that's just gone to the world now. Pretty much, there's guys who put hours and hours of work to translate the entire completed web novel that can no longer be shared really anymore mm-hmm. because the official one got picked up. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, we're not trying to step the the, the community. I think is very they, good about not trying to step about, on authors' uh, toes about yeah. stepping on the authors' toes. The only problem is the reason why the first parts of that. Kind of need to be taken down because the first five volumes of the light novel, basically the same as the web novel. So you kind of becomes kind of a thing. And then it kind of diverges at the fifth novel four. So you can leave gotcha. the rest of that up because it's different. Gotcha. Okay. No, that that's, I, I like that a lot. Yeah, uh, actually. So support so, the official release, like everything. If you can buy it, yeah, go and buy it. Absolutely. My, my thought process just being like, it sounds like the, the translated versions of things get, gets their own flavor. And uh, it's, it's. Sounds like you said almost criminal to to have someone it, it put all hurt. their flavor into a thing and then it just it's gone, gone well, not, or stolen or something awful. Well, not only that, like if you're translating it, like you might not be getting the the cultural relevance because it just might not mean as much. That's to true. You. That's so that's like, a fair point. Having having the author himself mentor you just allows you to always know what's relevant and what's it, it, what you need to focus on. Yeah, I, I think I think the the thing that I was trying to uh, back my way into was that it sounds like books that are uh, a situation like you guys have described, where the author is in conjunction with the translator, that things like what I described that happened to Tata Nusha won't happen. Yes, because the yeah, author, one hundred percent. Yeah, like e- even if the author decides, like, okay, yeah, we're gonna release this, like he knows a guy who already translated it and it's translated how he wants it translated. So we're just going to use this. Yeah. Like I, that's that, that warms my heart. Like the, I, this was like a very special novel to me. Like I had started reading novels on Ushia world during the pretty early parts of coiling dragon. Um, and this novel started being translated on it and my friend started reading it. He recommended it to me. So I started reading this like around chapter 30 or 40 in the translation. Oh man. And I was following it day to day until it was finished. That sounds very satisfying. Oh, it was an incredible journey. And like, have you been to the top of the mountain or seen one of the natural wonders of the world, like the grand Canyon or something where you just stand at it and life seems to make more sense or like you feel like you're, you're an inch from grasping something bigger about the world. That's the feeling I get when I read I Shall Seal the Heavens. It sounds like a couple of the drugs that I do. <laughs> <laughs> but if, well, no, if I Shall Seal the Heavens is, is, is very close to a psychedelic trip for you, then I am going to have to read I Shall Seal the Heavens. I don't think you'd be disappointed. Like I think you'd be hooked by probably the first, like, 
first quarter of the first book. Well, yeah. we said we were reinstating homework, so I guess that is my homework for uh, for next week. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think if you put in twenty five, you'd probably be all right. Feel pretty good about this. Uh, it's... Yeah, the first book I think is about a hundred. That's ninety five. Ninety five. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that puts okay. you. In a good spot. You you'll get to about twenty five chapters. You're like. I gotta keep going. Yeah, he's exploding asses. I gotta keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but I, I can't recommend this series enough. If you haven't read it, go read it. Like honestly, I got to the last maybe thirty or forty chapters, and I had to stop reading the series for for a while because thinking about "I shall seal the heavens" ending was starting to to emotionally hurt me. Like I I was I was getting anxiety about the series being over. I didn't listen to the last 30 I fell asleep listening to the last 45 minutes of the Adventure Zone and or the last episode of the Adventure Zone and I still have not gone back and listened to the last like 30 minutes very very carefully and I, and I'm and I can't bring myself to for exactly that. Like thinking about I I know I, like I've I know what happens and I remember it even though I was falling asleep, but I have not gone back and like, I can't make myself do that. I can't tread that. that tread path. that path. Uh, <laughs> should tread that dick. path, man. But I mean, honestly, like even the name of our podcast in, in no small part is an homage to this series. Absolutely. Uh, when, when we were getting inspiration for this, this, this series and and that bold declaration of I shall sell the heavens. By the way, the first time that that gets said in the book, and the first time that happens is fucking amazing. When he seals heavens, or when he says when them? he says I shall seal the heavens, just belligerently like yelling at the heavens, like Hey, heavens, fuck you! I shall seal the heavens. You gonna get sealed? <laughs> Come get your seals. Oh, uh, um, I guess. Listener, you can probably tell by the length of this episode how much this, how important this novel is to our main host here like i am still kind of at the beginning where i'm on i'm like three or four books in and it's it's incredible i'm enjoying every ride i can only imagine reading something like this day to day that is that sounds crazy yeah, it was also a great thing there's a <laughs> the author would, or the translator would post memes in every like chapter like in in the pre chapter previews <laughs> So that's watch. one of the reasons I would follow it day to day is because like as we'd got to the he would give like a small blurb, like a, a paragraph or two from the next chapter each day. And he would put like a meme about the last chapter oh. and they were hilarious. And there's actually if you look on the I shall seal the weapon, uh, the Weapons. I shall seal the heavens uh, index. Ooh, um, you should have named your website. I shall seal the weapons. Yeah, um, there's actually a, a, a link to the meme archives that you can go back and look at all of them. And if you've read the story, you'll be able to you'll be able to follow what's happening in the memes. It's it, they are hilarious. They like were it was a great time. Or conversely, as you're reading it, look up the memes or the that one's a little bit more difficult because like it's it's not, it's posted in like reverse order. So the ones at the beginning of the the thread. I think it's worth doing because I did that when I read Cooling Dragon where I got to relish in all of the chapter memes that would come out. Even like the fake chapters with Heiru flashing out and becoming a guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, God, that was so unfair. I read that not on April Fool's. Like it just blinds. It was an April Fool's joke that I caught in like August. <sighs> <sighs> no, yeah, it's a good time getting in on, on all of these. Or it, no, it wasn't August. It was like it was a few days after April Fool's because I was behind a couple days. But yeah, no, like Richard's right. We like it has gone on long, and this is a really like even to me. I'm like two thirds of the way through. I had to put it down to like, ugh, it was an intense, tense sometimes, moment. Sometimes you got to take a break. Like 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 I just love happens. You can marathon. Sometimes you got to take a break. But definitely. I say finish it. I say pick it up. Read the first 25 chapters like like our man here, our perennial guest is going to do. And if you don't if you're not hooked, which I doubt you won't be, don't keep keep going, but you're probably going to continue. Yeah. No, it's it's an incredible ride. Uh sounds it. And I will have a report for the first 25 chapters by the time we get back. I like it a lot. All right. Man, we didn't even get to like the idea of him being a legacy collector. Oh, I mean, yeah, dude. It, if there's a legacy in the journal area, like it's Monk House. It's Monk House. <laughs> um, but 
I think we need to bring this to a close here. Um, let's. What are we going to cover next week? I think it's Japanese next week, or is it Korean um, next week? I think next one is going to be Japanese. Um, I think we were talking about Kumo Desuka. Uh, Kumo Desuka. Let's go about that one. Kumo Desuka is a really fun novel. I recommend reading it. Yeah, I'm excited. Like... Another one I haven't read. I'm going to pick a few chapters up before we uh, before we Please start. Do. I would like to mention that I am working on a project for this very podcast, and in the far future, you will all be subject to my project. Cool. Subject to the project. I think he learned to read, and he wants to show it to us. Oh, jeez. That's mostly accurate. (laughs) Oh, man, I was going to say hurtful, but okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, thank you so, so much for listening uh, to us talk about things that we love. Yeah. If you enjoyed the podcast, please uh, review us on iTunes. Uh, it helps us get more visibility and would definitely, definitely help us get the word out about these great novels that I love and that probably you love to more people. This is a pretty small community. So, like, tell the people that you also know in this community about this podcast or, like, you know, whatever. Don't listen to me. Don't let me tell you what to do. Maybe you have a coworker or a friend who you've always wanted to read with these novels and they never get around to it. Yeah. Maybe our excitement will get them to check it out. Yeah, just uh, pick an episode of. Uh, eventually, we'll cover the book you want them to read. So, for sure, give or them that episode and see if it gets them interested. Suggest us the book that you want us to read. Yeah, to no, tell your if, friend about. If you've got a book that you think would be awesome for us to review, let us know. You can send that to well. You can send that to just our uh, our, our network uh, email right now, tiger dot at gmail dot com, uh, and uh, entitle it uh, uh, "Treading the Path of Heaven" book, and uh, and we'll I, get on it. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to see that. I, I you'll get a personal response from me. Let us what's, know. The, what's the email address again? Tiger.rollercoaster at gmail.com. Yeah, we might even read your your, your recommendation. Yeah. Oh man. Might. Well, no, that Pure would be mail. great. I would love to I would love to read a recommendation before we started talking about a book. But uh anyway, thank you so 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 much for listening to us. And uh we'll get back to you next time with Kimo Desco. Peace. Bye. We miss you. Tiger Roller Coaster Productions. Tigers are scary. You try to get off.